Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to a special episode of the Service Design Show. In this episode, we're going to look at the life of an in-house service designer. What's it like to be on the inside? You're going to hear about the challenges in-house service designers face, like how to build a design culture, how to break down internal silos and how to spread service thinking in a very product and tech driven environment. Of course, you'll also get some practical tips and advice on how to navigate around these challenges. So even if you're not currently working in-house, I think these stories will be super useful. The brief background to this episode is that more and more organizations are building internal service design capabilities. But the reality is that a lot of service design teams are still quite small. So if you're an in-house service designer, you often don't have a lot of colleagues and peers around you who you can get feedback from. Being an in-house service designer these days means that you're seen as the expert, the one who has to come up with the answers. But sometimes that can be really challenging if you don't have a benchmark around you. So for all those in-house service designers who want to grow as a professional, I've started organizing the campfires. The campfires are a private mastermind where a small group of in-house service designers gets together with their peers from different countries, organizations, and industries. We've just completed season four of the campfire. And in this episode, you're going to hear the stories of the campers who were part of this group. They all are in-house service designers, but from very different organizations, ranging from the Swedish tax office to the fashion giant Zalando. They're going to give you a sneak peek what happens behind the curtains at these organizations. You'll learn which challenges they face. And like I said, you'll also get some practical tips and advice on how you can be more successful as a service designer. If you're also an in-house service designer who wants to connect with peers from across the globe, join us for an upcoming campfire. The application for the next round has just started and you can find all the details on how to apply at servicedesignshow.com slash campfire. We only have room for eight participants, so there is quite a strict application process. Again, if you want to join, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash campfire and read how to apply. And now we're going to jump into the stories of the service design professionals who did apply to the campfire. Let the show begin. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hello. Hello. Yes, that, that was the thing I was waiting for. Uh, a new group of campers uh, who will be sharing uh, their best practices, learnings, maybe pitfalls on how to be more successful as an in-house service designer. Let's jump right in. Uh, you'll get introduced to everyone, but we're going to start with somebody and not just somebody. We're going to start with Ben. Um, hey, Ben, could you give a short intro of who you are and what made you sign up for the campfire? Sure. Uh, my name is Ben McCammon. I work as a director of service innovation um, at a Canadian-based company called McKenzie Investments. So we are basically like an investment management company. Uh, we create mutual funds and ETFs and other products like that. So I lead a, a small in-house team. Uh, we sit within operations. So we, we collaborate with call center teams and, and back office teams and uh, all sorts of folks who deal with technology and employee experience and customer experience. And what brought me to the campfire was um, even though I didn't know all these people yet, it was it was the opportunity to get to know people like uh, like me who work in house. Because uh, at my company, um, you know, most of the the folks that I collaborate with are not service designers or uh, customer customer experience designers or any of that. They're um, business people and financial planners and all sorts of other things. So I was really looking forward to, I guess, learning from learning from this group and, and being able to, you know, have some dialogue around things and, and talk to people who kind of get it and have mm. been there and mm. um, sort of learn from what, what's been successful from them or, uh, or not successful. <laughs> so that also helps. Yeah. Being amongst uh, peers that, uh, that usually is a nice experience. Um, so you aren't surrounded by a lot of uh, service designers in your professional environment. What are some typical challenges that you face being in-house as a service designer? 
Um, I mean, there's a few, I'd say one is just, um, I came, so I came from being a consultant. So it's, that's a part of the adjustment for me too. A few years ago, I was just doing this as a consultant. So coming in house, I think I've had to learn that there's a lot more legwork that has to happen in order to create projects, opportunities, right? So when I was a consultant, it was kind of like, oh, somebody says we have some money to spend, somebody you know puts out an RFP or somebody reaches out and says, hey, we wanna work with you again. What you don't realize is all the, the sort of foundational work and all the stuff that's been happening in the background to get to that point. So now um, doing this kind of work, uh, you know, in house, I'm realizing that that's, you know, that's a huge amount of effort and, and comes along with, um, it requires different skills than just uh, executing the work or like, you know, using the methods and doing the actual service design work. There's all this other stuff that, uh, that you have to do. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll touch on more of that in a bit. So that would be one. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, for me right now, I'm working within a company that's undergoing a lot of change. So they're changing technology, they're changing ways of working, the industry is changing, there's all sorts of change happening. So in that kind of environment, when you're leading a team who's also says, hey, we like to come and change stuff, a lot of people are like, yeah, we, there's, enough, <laughs> there's enough changing already. Um, so it's sort of understanding how to still uh, be able to make things happen and be able to improve things when you're working in a, in a company that maybe there's already, you know, lots and lots of, of big uh, changes happening and, and sort of spanning over multiple years. So um, again, I don't know if some of the other folks in the campfire can relate to that, but that's, I think that's another big change that uh, as an in-house service designer, you have to kind of grapple with what are people already trying to do and what's what kind of changes are already happening in the organization mm. yeah let's not give away too many challenges and leave uh, a few for the other uh, campers yeah. so um having been in this group for now five weeks and having listened to these stories what would your biggest piece of advice be for somebody who wants to be more successful impactful as an in-house service designer I would say, so one of them would be, it depends, it depends what kind of team you're working on. So I think if your team is, is new, like brand new, or if you're the person who's, if it's just you, <laughs> you're the team or you're starting the team, I think it's very different. Um, but I would say a, one piece of advice if your team is not new is don't wait too long to find out the history of the team and what happened before and and what led to that being created so in my case even though in hindsight it seems sort of like a no-brainer i probably waited a full year from when i joined before i actually kind of said okay let me really understand the history of the the team and where it came from and what were all the sort of little versions of it and eras that happened before I joined because in my case the team had actually existed for more than five years so um, yeah understand the history so you kind of know like you, then you can figure out where you need to go next I don't know why it took me a year to sort of sit down and collect that collect that history because you have to kind of like pull it out of the brains of probably a bunch of different people it's not like nobody's going to hand it to you written down in a, in a little book that would be one of them yeah become a historian i've heard that one uh, uh a few times already and i think it's a good skill to to master as a service designer my final question to you would be what do you think you'll remember from this campfire experience uh, in a year time i think for me it's been the emphasis on relationship building um we've talked a lot about that and that's that's something I think I'm going to take away and not, I mean, not just that relationships are important, but I think um, somebody shared this line, one of you, the other campers here, you know, like organizations run on relationships. And I think 
it's one thing to kind of know, oh yeah, relationships are important, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's another to really sort of understand how critical they are to the success of doing something like service design and how, you know, for me, what I'm taking away is I need to be actively paying attention to relationships and thinking about not just, oh, they're good, but how am I investing in, in them? How am I building them? And, and, uh, and doing that really deliberately as opposed to just focusing on the work, let's say. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, the campfire is a great place to, I would say, build connections, networks, friends, uh, making new connections and relationships. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next camper and hear uh, their story. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, Diana. Diana, could you give a brief intro who you are and what made you join the campfire? Yes, sure. So uh, my name is Diana. I work uh, as a service designer. It's in Swedish tax agency in Stockholm. Uh, and uh, what made me join was that I, I was looking for inspiration. I was feeling alone. I have extremely talented colleagues, but yet sometimes you need to get out. And right now it's kind of sort of hard to get out there. I mean, Conf there are conferences, but they're still online. So you kind of, but you still have the same urge to meet people and to share your experiences and to exchange. And it was a really great way of doing that. I had no expectations, but it it was definitely exceeded. Hmm. I'm curious. Um, you work at the Swedish tax office agency. What is, if you would have to pick one, the biggest challenge you face as an in-house service designer uh, the the top one perhaps is that people think solutions uh, so instead of thinking okay what are we solving with this service we think about i mean before even going in in like a research they already have a, a solution in their heads that it will be digi digital, digital services because what else can it be and uh, that's the biggest challenge that we that I'm fighting every day, pretty much. Uh, yeah, this is also something I hear from a lot of service designers who are in a product driven environment. I'm curious if your piece of advice is related to this. So what would you say to somebody who wants to be more successful as an in-house service designer? My advice perhaps is, I mean, we we get to talk about uh, that sometimes a designer can feel a bit alone. Stefan was sharing a lot about experience because I mean, it's a new area or kind of new area. And sometimes you're alone in a company. I think the best advice is to get out and try to talk people and make connections. Um, sometimes reading books is not enough. Uh, so that's perhaps because sitting alone, you, you can kind of, miss things for example that thing that ben mentioned that you know it's very important to understand the history and that you didn't think of that before but how could you know that you can't just know everything so when you talk to people you get a lot of insights that you can apply in your daily work hmm. and uh, this makes me think that there's a book next to me which is called <laughs> get lucky it's a funny title but it's actually about increasing serendipity and I think the campfire is one of those examples where you can increase serendipity. Like you said, even without having expectations up front, you go in, you are open, you ask questions, you listen, and then you learn things that you didn't know up front, you didn't know, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. What is the thing that you'll remember in a year of time? Um, I would be a bit practical here, but uh, I got, we started talking about jobs to be done. And that's actually a way to move from thinking solution to the problem. And that's something that I, I started like reading a lot and spreading to my colleagues in my organization. And we're like, this is the good stuff. We are reading books about it. So I think it's one of the practical things that are taking away with me so that, that will, I will spread it further. I think that's a very good measurable way of, of saying what I'm taking. From awesome. That. Yeah. Yeah. Something very, really practical that you can apply and you are applying the next uh, day in your practice. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so sorry for that. Um, thanks, Diana. We'll be in touch uh, for sure. I'm going to move on to the next camper. And that is David. Same question to you, David. Who are you? Uh, why did you sign up? 
Okay. David Spencer here. I'm leading business strategy, as we call it, uh, to the area in, in my company, Findasense, which is a consultancy firm specialized in marketing services to big companies, big brands, or iconic brands like Coca Cola or Lenovo, Grupo Santander, and that kind of, of, of companies. Um, business strategy in my company, it's a blended operation among strategy by itself, service design and strategic design innovation. And we take care of, or, or we look after uh, improving our portfolio of services to our clients and also accompany the consultants and the, the, the team that uh, the, team, yeah, the teams that are uh, providing services to our clients with uh, new mindsets, new perspectives to improve the, the final delivery on these kind of services. What uh, brought me in the campfire was uh, some sort of the same root uh, cause of, of, of it. Um, I'm, I'm a long life learner uh, and, and I like very much, as, as you call that, I, I noted that that book, uh, Increasing or you know, uh, CDBT, or, or, or yeah, Increasing CDBT is a, is a good way to, to, to uh, frame it. Um, just to learn from, from other industries, other approaches, other perspectives from other service designers uh, and um, uh, what, uh, what failed in such, well, in, in certain situations, what succeeded in certain situations, and because maybe I'm wrong in, in the way I'm approaching to, to the way of, uh, of transforming my own company. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Even if you are not wrong, you might still learn uh, ways how things can be improved. Uh, so that's uh, also a very good um, attitude to enter the, the campfire. You are in a more senior position, I would say, than most uh, campers. Um, and still, I'm sure you have challenges uh, as an in-house service designer. What would you say is a typical challenge you face? A common challenge, both in in-house in in the company, in my company, and in the client side, in the corporate uh, side of, of business in in the companies, is uh, silo the structures and the way these silos uh, think by by uh, itself or as an entity. Uh, every silo tries to protect itself from the rest of uh, either ideas, perspectives or from others because they build trust from within or inside out this silo. And it's, um, well, once any, any uh, department or functional area is built and it uh, uh, gets uh, certain success uh, throughout time, um, they believe that the, the truth is just one, but the one that is that comes from from within that silo. So the main challenge, challenge is how to get that adoption from 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 outside in uh, into those silos. And do you have a piece of advice how we can do that? Yeah, most of the of these challenges uh, have to be uh, uh, yeah. Um, they are they are connected to the approval processes of of uh, ideas, projects, programs, or or by itself budget, and uh, any idea or any uh, implementation, either is in, if it is inside your company or if it is for a client, it needs to go through the through the financial stuff. And I always always talk the same the same story. As service designers, we are pretty biased on the desirability and the feasibility fields of uh, design, strategic design, the, the, the human certain center design and the technical side. But the decision makers are very lent to, into the, the, the financials. And as service designers, we all need to, to go in and, and talk about profit. What's, what's in the plate of the decision makers? What, uh, what, what this idea is, is, is bringing into the, to the business for them and for the rest of the company to to improve or grow or yeah. grow your business language that's basically what you're mm. saying yeah exactly mm. what is your biggest uh, takeaway or insight from the last four weeks uh yeah um mostly mostly the same just to to deepen in in that uh in that same recommendation i say um Financials are very, very important. And this leads me to, to uh, deepen into the, what's in the mindset of, of the, the people that uh, needs to, to adopt the ideas. So, and that's something that's also 
uh, um, got in the or, or, or appeared in our campfire sessions about uh, what it is, is our job as service designers to do the, the, the work of, of getting adopted the, this, these ideas. Not the, it's not the job of them, the, the, the decision makers, to, to do it. We need to convince and to influence. So mostly, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, it's, it's a matter of working and building influence and uh, along with Ben, very uh, in, in, into agreement with, with him, uh, building relationships and influence uh, uh, ecosystems are uh, very, very important. Hmm. Yeah, I, I second that. Uh, building a business vocabulary, building our influence on decision making. Um, we have to understand how a company operates and uh, financials are an important uh, ingredient there. Thanks for sharing, David. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next camper. And in this case, it's Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Hey. <laughs> Could you share a little bit about who you are and also what made you sign up for the campfire? Yes, of course. So I'm Caroline and I'm a service design lead in a French insurance company within an innovation team. And uh, what brought me to the campfire um, was simply I was curious about uh, what it is like to be a service designer in other companies and other countries also. And uh, if there are also uh, common patterns between us and uh, also getting other perspectives on similar issues. And um, yeah, that's all. Awesome. Um, what are typical or what is the most important challenge that you face as an in-house service designer? Um, I think it's a lot about um, design culture and how might we create a design culture for everyone in the company. Uh, what are the tools, methods, guidelines, uh, the mindset we have to infuse in the company? Because um, it's almost easy when you have one centralized team, but when there are several teams in different departments with different backgrounds, it's really hard to coordinate and deliver a consistent experience for, for the customer. And uh, that's my main challenge. Mm. And is your piece of advice tied to creating a design culture within the organization or do you have a different piece of advice? Yes, I think we all have a topic on building relationships. Uh, and uh, because uh, I think that service designer is a team sport. And if you want to make a change in your company, uh, so you need to be connected with others, understand the drivers, uh, the intentions and the inner motivations of your interlocutors and take a coffee with them <laughs> and just ask, uh, how are you doing? It works. It sounds so easy, right? But uh, <laughs> I even for myself uh, added a weekly agenda item to just be in touch with people, with students, uh, with campers and um doing it without a fixed agenda so just calling people up and seeing how they're doing and that's basically i think also what you're advocating yeah i agree hmm. what is the thing that you hope you'll remember in a year time about the campfire um I think I will remember the campers <laughs> simply and um, uh, the kind of advices uh, I had. And um, I will love also how it was structured as uh, a 90 minutes to listen and then we can share our stories and informational discussions uh, the rest of the week. I really appreciate, appreciate that. And, uh, and the feeling also having a little in-house community um, in the vast world of story design, it was really helpful. We're, we're uh, in-house service design and distributed in-house service design team working at different organizations. <laughs> um, thank you, Caroline. Okay. We're going to move from France to Germany. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Mark. Hey, um, we're not, I'm not seeing you, but uh, I hope the rest is. Could you give a brief intro who you are and how did you end up in the campfire? Uh, yeah, thanks. So I hope everyone can see me. Um, so uh, my name is Stefan Joost. I work as a service designer and technology consultant for Invensity, which is a technology consultancy, mainly working in the automotive industry in Germany. And um, my, I have different kind of interests in joining the campfire. It 
it was actually interesting to join the format of the campfire itself. So uh, having the feeling at least to sit around a, a campfire and sharing stories, uh, maybe listening to music also, which was kind of interesting, but especially learning um, um, from others, uh, experienced service designers and um, getting excited also what is happening at the campfire. So a little bit of um, surprise was there for me as well. Um, but also the chance to be at, in the hot seat at some point and share my own story and let's say get advice from six very experienced uh, service designers from different fields uh, was what excited me about being part of the campfire. Yeah, we have, a, of course, sharing stories is what happens uh, at a campfire, at least from my perspective. Uh, and it's uh, a lot about listening, asking questions, but it's also about if you have... Uh, a piece of advice that relates to somebody's experience. We also share that. So um, there was an interesting uh, experience. I'm curious, Stefan, what would you say is a typical challenge in how service designers face? So a typical challenge could be as service design is kind of like a new discipline in, 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 in design, but also in, in the industries that we are working in. So introducing service design as an approach for me, for example, into a technical focused company was quite a challenge and is, is still a challenge um, because explaining the approach itself and showing their effects immediately is not the easiest part of it, especially if you work together with people that are very technically focused and that say like look you have a technical solution and it's very easy and you you see the effects immediately um and then showing the team okay it's it's very helpful to use the service design approach in our company as well and you will see the effects maybe later on or maybe in small changes uh, is and was quite uh, difficult for me and uh, to find the support actually um to introduce this approach into a company totally. Yeah, welcome to the club, uh, explaining what we do and especially to people who are used to having and seeing very tangible results. Yeah, um, it's still something we are, we're working on. Is your piece of advice related to this or do you have uh, a different piece of advice to share? No, actually, um, well, my piece of advice is a little bit abstract, let's say, because um, what I'm trying to explain people is you need one, you need a top management to introduce service design as they have to have your back, uh, especially as this approach is not maybe working immediately and you see the, the effects immediately from the, from the start on when you implement a, a new project, but later on. So you will need the backup of the top management um, to have their support. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a, for a small project internally or maybe a bigger project that is going to be externally. But also from the other side, um, convincing or let's say convincing the people uh, bottom up um, what are the effects of service design in their daily lives or what they can be, even the smaller changes is quite important. So try to find fans for the approach as well. Try to find people that will be part of your movement to make service design bigger in your company so this is my biggest piece of advice mm, i would be curious to hear if you have any ideas on how to how to find fans well um usually you would say uh, do successful projects basically but um it, maybe even if you fail it, you you can show people that this approach works maybe also in other companies and other industries so in my opinion it's going to be one of the biggest um, topics in this decade now um, is going to be service design. And so maybe people will follow you automatically or maybe you have to convince them a little bit more with the successful projects um, or explaining them the approach itself. What would you say is your biggest learning or takeaway from this experience? So it, it still has to do with something with what I was mentioning before. So my biggest learning is that how difficult it is um, to implement service design in the different companies, but also across different industries. As we see, we have the, someone from the Swedish tax agency and we have uh, like people from financial companies, to technology companies. So it's, very, it's in, in every industry you can say, look, we're just starting 
right now. And it, it is very important to build up this resilience um, to actually get projects done successfully at some point. Um, yeah. So I think this is uh, my biggest learning from this. Yeah. And I like your resilience uh, highlight because it's easy to get demotivated uh, when you don't see things moving as quickly as you hope and um, don't give up, stay in the game. Uh, and um, sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes you're not in the right environment and have to move on to a different company maybe, but don't quit. That's, I think, uh, the most important message, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, thanks, uh, Stefan. Let's move on to the next camper. We're going to fly across the ocean and we're going to LA. Uh, in this case, good morning, Martina. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> awesome that you're here. I'm really curious uh, what made you sign up and also who are you? Um, so, my name is Martina. I'm a Brazilian designer based in California. Los Angeles right now and right now I'm working in a healthcare uh, company here uh, and and what brought me to the campfire was that I'm right now working in a very small team it's kind of basically a, two, a team of two persons and uh, it's just me I have a partner and I'm an our boss so what brought me here was the desire to connect with other service designers and to understand their reality Mm. And I've seen this uh, quite often in the campfire that people are joining because they're just a team of one or maybe two. And it's it's nice to have colleagues around you, even though they are not physically present. So if you are in such a situation, mm -hmm. I encourage you to also consider joining the campfire. Martina, what would you say, um, what, we, what have you found to be a typical challenge for in-house service designers? Um. Interesting that question because I, that was something that I realized by kind of being in the campfire, kind of listening to your other stories, something related to the lack of accountability that we have inside the company. So as service designers, we often do exercise and we do activities to help people to see from a more broad perspective, kind of how can you see that problem from, you know, as, how can you see the bigger picture? But then they, they don't know what to do with that because they don't, they're, there's no accountability. No one is kind of really saying that, okay, so I'm able to fix this. So yeah, I think this is um, working as a service designer in company. This is, um, I think it's one of the biggest challenges, find who is accountable, who is responsible to move on and fix the things. That's a great point. And that's definitely a challenge when we're working holistic uh, in a holistic way, uh, we cross silos, cross departments. There's usually like who owns that experience, who owns that mm -hmm. service. Um, when you're trying to fix things that are holistic, that's that's challenging. Um, is your piece of advice related to this? Um, a little bit, but I would say that I think that might be some of advice for other service designers that. Kind of every time that you feel alone, kind of it's super important to connect with other service designers, trying to find other service designers um, in meetups or kind of it, it's so important to connect, to, to learn from others' experience. Right? So that's why the campfire was kind of a great experience for me to learn from other experience. So. And if you have to reflect, what is the thing that you learned from the experience of others in this case? Oh, I have learned so much here, but um, I'm going to just share something that I learned from a participant here in the group. <laughs> so Adam was talking one day briefly about how other service designers, uh, how, how oftentimes service designers are just good facilitators and they have never built a service itself, kind of. They just, they just do good workshops, but they have never really working in and kind of build a service from scratch or kind of fix everything and that really uh, that's an insight that is kind of inside my head like okay so how can I how can I be part of everything kind of you know when I used to be when I was working as a UX designer I was usually part of the whole process you know and I was delivering things and I'll feel that I was part of everything but as a service designer there's a lot of projects that are just part of that at the beginning 
and then we have other teams kind of be rebuilding this and then i feel like really distance from from the, the real solution when they deliver that so i think that something that i'm looking for right now after this camp is kind of how can i be more connected with the projects that i start until the end so i can have that feeling that okay so i really accomplished something kind of I follow this through not only on the beginning of the process. Yeah, and that's, that takes time and that takes patience. Uh, mm -hmm. Going from uh, inception to delivery of a service can take a while, depending on your context. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be uh, monitoring your journey, Martina, that's for sure. Uh, thanks for sharing. And you mentioned Adam already. Um, so yeah, why not? Let's move on to Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. You know what the two starting questions are, so take it away. Yeah, sure. So I'm Adam. I'm a product designer uh, from Zalando, uh, working uh, in an in-house studio, I would say, with different design teams, um, product managers, engineers to build the starting place for fashion in Europe. Um, uh, what actually brought me to the campfire was a good friend's recommendation uh from natalie she's a designer over in the nyc and uh she said that i should get on board and uh it was curiosity that took me the rest of the way i would say and also we had we were lucky enough to have mark as a guest at service design drinks berlin which is another event that i organize um and so i was of course obliged to sign up and participate it seems that curiosity is a common theme when people sign up. And I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for you having the confidence in actually getting into an experience, not knowing upfront what it, uh, what it will bring. And um, what would you say is a typical challenge for in-house service designers? Um, a typical challenge, I would say, is getting productive and uh, making services. But also, I would say another big challenge is to increase the people's mindset of what service thinking is. Uh, people often, I find, in Zalando are very transactional uh, and in their products and in the, in the tech scene itself. Um, and how do you change uh, people's minds? So this is uh, one thing that I find is challenging for in-house designers to get people to think in services, who you're serving, how you're serving them, um, and getting them to be, I guess, human-centered. But another challenge I would say is that everyone faces is that you're designing for people, yes, but you're also designing with people. So to also look at yourself designing with the people that you're uh, going to produce these products and services with, which is a, a big challenge. I think we learned how important people are in the design process, in producing designs, but also, yeah, how it affects people in the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I totally agree. Uh, we have so much focus on the end user, but the people we're designing with are also people and uh, layering uh, on top of that, we maybe even have to start with ourselves and seeing ourselves, <laughs> the designer as, as the person. So uh, maybe that's the next frontier. Adam, yeah. do you have a good piece of advice for in-house service designers who want to be more impactful? Um, yeah, I think understanding people, like it's been mentioned before in this uh, session, is, is talking, understanding people, having empathy for people that you work for is a great starting point. You're not going to be the hero of all services. You're not going to be the hero designer that does everything themselves. You will need your team. You will need the people around you. Um, and um, it it is what you know as well and your skills and talents, but it's also who you know and how you can empathize and work with them. And I think books uh, that look at emotions in the workplace or making a manager, these books that really focus on the other side of being a designer, not the uh, task oriented side, but the empathy heart people side, that is a, that's a great place to start. You always need those skills, no matter what you're doing and uh, yeah, practice those skills every day. So what were the two books you referenced? One is Making a Manager by Julia Tsu, and the other one is Emotions in the Workplace. And I've lost the book. Mm. Mm. They're both fantastic books. Yeah. I will add the links to the, to the show notes. Yeah. Um, Adam, also the question for you. Um, what will you remember in a year time from this campfire experience? Yeah, I think uh, what, we'll take, what I will take away from this is no matter where you are in the world, uh, no matter what level you're at in the design career and your journey, 
that there are common things and common challenges that uh, kind of work along the way. I think that's what everyone else has kind of realized is that in my corner of the world, I thought things were very different, but I can see now in the US there's similar challenges and all over Europe there's similar challenges. And I would assume that also in Asia and Australia, there's similar challenges and uh, it's about how we work with people, how we collaborate um, and how we actually drive impact. And um, I don't think there's a silver bullet, which makes me very upset sometimes, but um, I learned that we're all struggling together, which is really, really nice. Yeah, it's much better to struggle together than to struggle alone. <laughs> and I think that's a, yeah. <laughs> a very important value proposition of the campfire. If you want to be part of the upcoming campfire group, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash campfire and read the instructions on how to apply. The application deadline for the next group is April 26th, 2021. And like I said in the beginning, we only have space for eight participants. I review the applications in the order that I receive them. So to increase your chance of getting in, make sure to submit your application right after this episode. Once again, you can find all the details on how to apply at servicedesignshow.com slash campfire. I hope you found these stories useful, even if you're not an in-house service designer. Thanks again for listening to this episode, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.